They were worn with a cutaway. And you look so handsome in a cutaway. They used to be worn with a cutaway when I was much younger. And that silk hat. Ever since you had it clean, has been too small. Oh, but you look so distinguished, even if you just hold it. <laughs> uh, well, James, you hurry and get dressed. I'll answer the door. I guess it's Millie. Happy New Year, Mrs. Hardy. Sign here, please. Oh, same to you, Jimmy. Thank you. Oh, dear. James, it's a telegram. It must be bad news. Who's it from? What's it say? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Well, reading it's about the only way you'll ever find out. James, do something. There must be some law against it. Yeah. Let me see what he says. No, it isn't from him. It's from Marion. Are you sure she said married? After all, I can read English, even if I was born in Canada. Emily, what makes you think Andrew is married? James Hardy, you can't get separated until after you've been married. Emily, I'm going to reveal some military information to you. In the other war, when a man left the army, he was discharged. In the recent one, a soldier gets separated from the service. You see? Well, I don't see why the army can't come right out and tell a boy's own mother. Hello there. Well, this is a new outfit. Does it look too giddy? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you laughing at me? Oh, no, Millie, no. Millie, read the best piece of news that's happened to the Hardy family in two years. <laughs> James, the hat. Emily, this, I have no control over this hat. It's small. Now, James. Step back, Judge, on the curb. Son, I. Uh, Me too. Me too, dear. Wonderful to have you home. How did you get here? Fly? Yes, ATC, C 54, and bingo, here I am. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, you, you look pretty enough to eat. <laughs> Say now. Andrew, stop that. I'm your old mate, Ash. <laughs> Excuse me, Judge. Uh, will you look at this? I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Andrew just came home. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, I can't believe that I'm back. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to have you home again, Andrew. Andrew? Oh, excuse me. Say, Mom, did you get any messages for me? Uh, 
Telegram, maybe? Not that I know of. Why, are we expecting something special? Oh, not especially special. Something from college. Oh, college. Did you notify them that you're home and out of the service? Well, after I arrived, I wired you. I sort of set a wire. <laughs> <laughs> You mean my sister? Oh, she, she's fine. Andrew, you don't have to go to church if you don't want to. Mother understands. Oh, well, but I do want to go to church. With your head, why did you wear this? Happy New Year, Happy George. New Year. Happy New Year, Mr. Benedict. And a Happy New Year to you. Oh, may I present Senorita Isabel Gonzalez? Isabel, these three <laughs> nice people. As if are... I didn't know. This is Andy Hardy's father, the judge. And this must be Mother Hardy. <laughs> and Aunt Millie, of course. And my daughter Polly wrote Isabel that there was no point in visiting Carvel with Andrew in the service. He just got out. <laughs> Andrew's home? Yes, yes. Miss Gonzalez, I'd like you to meet... James, who's Andrew? We've lost Andrew. Oh, Emily, Andrew found his way home across an ocean in a large part of a continent. I don't think he's gone forever. That wouldn't be Andrew Hardy over there. Andrew. Andrew! How does it feel to be the father of Andrew Hardy? Well, that's a privilege I try to bear, modestly. Uh, excuse me, folks. I guess I must have been thinking about something else. Welcome home, Andrew. We really missed you. Thank you, sir. How did you like the Army? Well, Mr. Benedict, I come from a long line of civilians, and I'm happy to be back with them. <laughs> uh, Miss Gonzalez, may I present my son? Andrew, Miss Isabel Gonzalez. How do you do, Mr. Hardy? How do you do? Gosh, I've heard so much about you, I feel I know you already. And if actually meeting you is going to be any more exciting than thinking about it for two whole years, I know I'll just blow up. You're very kind. It's a nice day, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, there's the organ starting. Nice to have met you, senorita. Uh, we'll uh, see him again this evening at the country club. You folks are coming, aren't you? Of course, of course, of course. Please be there. Mr. Benedict has put me in the show, and Polly tells me you're a great judge of singing. Come along, dear. Well, they're uh, a pretty girl, don't you think so, Andrew? Girl? What girl? Oh, oh, uh, pretty? Uh, funny thing, I didn't even notice. You did. Now I've heard everything. mess sergeant could see that, he'd cut his throat. <laughs> Andrew! Hmm? Are you all right? Well, I never felt better in my... Oh, excuse me, Dad. Go ahead and say grace. Well, Andrew, I'm a broad-minded man, but I can't ask God to bless our dinner when... you're not wearing your pants. Oh, oh, my pants. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, excuse me. I wasn't even thinking about pants. What could he have on his mind that's that serious? Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's no laughing matter. James, do you suppose the arm has changed, Andrew? I'll say that Andrew's changed. But those two years are vital ones in the life of a boy. Because those are the years, whether he's at home or in the army, when he changes from a boy to a grown man. But, James, that awful pretty girl in church, do you know, he looked at her as if she weren't there? It proves he is older. Not that old, Millie. Andrew, if you eat any more, you'll blow up and bust. I'll fill up my plate, Dad, and stand back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fill up on home-cooked food, because in the next two weeks I'm going back to Wainwright. 
get my degree, and then I'm going on to law school. Thanks. Good, Andrew, good. Well, suppose we start your allowance then, as of now. Uh, I'm going to say something that'll come as a shock to practically everybody here, including me. But I'm not going to cost this family a single penny for the next two years. James, this is not our son, Andrew. I'm not crazy, folks. On account of having been in the Army, I get my tuition plus $75 a month for the next two years. It's the millennium. <laughs> Imagine having a son that isn't going to cost the family a penny. <laughs> of course, that doesn't mean if you see something in a store that would make me a nice present, you should be ashamed to send it to me. I don't want my money to go to your head. Well, there won't be any presents, Andrew. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to put your allowance aside as a nest egg for your first years as a young lawyer. Gosh, that's a swell idea, Dad. Thanks. And, oh, here's a few hundred dollars you can put in the fund to help it along. And, Dad, don't give me any of that money back if I come crawling to you on my stomach. Well, with a fortune involved, maybe I'd better draw up a legal agreement in writing. As far as I'm concerned, Judge Hardy, your word is good enough for me. <laughs> enough of these commercial matters. How about some dessert, Mom? Well, we can get some ice cream at the country club. Come on, we're late. Excuse me. Give me Western Union, please. Hello, Western Union. This is Andrew Hardy. Look, I'm expecting a telegram, only I'm not going to be home. Could you possibly... All right, Andrew, if you'll get the car, we'll be off to the country club. Yes, sir. Good evening, good hey. evening. You'd better hurry on in. Isabel's going to sing right away. Hello. Hello, Western Union. This is Andrew Hardy speaking. Say, if a telegram comes for me, would you... You just sent it to the house. But there's nobody there. Well, maybe if I leave now, I can get there before the messenger does. Thanks, goodbye. Andrew! Well, what are you bound for? Uh, excuse me, Dad. I guess I've been away so long. I, I thought the dance floor was this way. Andrew, your mother's waited two years for this night. Hiya, Hardy. Hi. Andrew, that's Tommy Gilchrist. Oh, he's merely a casual acquaintance, Mother. Oh, excuse me. He's one of my oldest friends. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gilchrist. Boy, hello, good evening, Mr. Gilchrist. Hey, when did you get back? And where's that four dollars you borrowed from me the day you were drafted? <laughs> uh, never mind that now. I'll give it back to you with a legal interest. First of all, right now you got to do something for me that will probably confuse you, but I understand perfectly. Go back in the phone booth there and call the clerk on the desk here and tell him that you're somebody next door to Judge Hardy's and you can hear the water running. And tell him to tell the judge you better send Andy home before there's some damage done. You got it? Sure. For four dollars plus interest. Sure, sure. Now, will you go ahead? It's a case of life or death. <laughs> Give me the nickel. Oh, it's nice to have seen you. Wonderful to have seen you. <laughs> Mother? when you left, wasn't it? Why, of course, Andrew. Why shouldn't it be? Well, I just thought maybe somebody had forgotten to do something. Oh, Mr. Benedict, if you're going that way, will you tell Judge Hardy there's water running at his house? He'd better send Andrew home to stop it. Well, we mustn't bother Andrew tonight. Uh... Call the police station. They'll have the patrolman on the beat turn it off. Very good, sir.
bailar al estilo de Chihuahua la polquita bonita que alegre el corazón y en su compás olvidar los pesares de mi alma estrechando entre mis brazos a la dueña de mi amor. Ella es la más linda flor que Chihuahua dio para mí. Jesucita, tal dulce amor con que soy feliz. All of this means when you're talking in the English language, there is a place that you find down beneath the border. Where people dance and where you'll find kisses made to order. Have yourself a polka that engage you our time. Ay, que lindo es bailar feliz la polquita. Meaning it is grand to dance a polka. La flor que Chihuahua dio para mí. Hey, Susita, este dulce amor con que soy feliz. Ay, qué lindo es bailar feliz la polquita. Meaning it is grand to dance a polka hand in hand. Suenan todos los violines y también las guitarras nos marcan el compás para for. All of this means when you're talking in the English language, find yourself a polka and go dancing hand in hand. Oh, there you are, wonderful. Perfectly lovely. Didn't you think so, Andrew? I thought she was swell. I'm not as blasé as Andrew. I think you were more than swell. I'm not an authority on music, but I'm sure that you'll find Andrew a very fine dancer. Thank you, Judge. But I know Andrew would like the first dance with his mother. I'll take the next five or six. <laughs> uh, well, Mom, would you care to have the first one with your son? I love it, Andrew. Excuse us. Mom, could I ask you something and you not tell anybody about it? Why, of course, Andrew. Well, when you were young, Mom, you knew an awful lot of pretty girls and popular ones and intelligent ones, too. Well, your father used to think I was that kind of girl. Oh, goodness, of course, Mom. <laughs> you know, somehow a fellow never gets around to realizing that his mother was once the belle of the ball. He always thinks of her as something more wonderful, like she is now. That's very lovely, Andrew. Well, uh, Mom, would that kind of a girl, would, could she settle down in a uh, small town? I was happy to do that very thing with your father. Well, I, I mean, uh, modern girls, girls today, would they in a small town? The right kind of girl hasn't changed in any generation, Andrew, never will. Mm -hmm. Were you uh, thinking of anyone in particular? I, I was mostly just asking. <laughs> of course, Andrew. Uh, do you mind if I cut in on my wife? Oh, certainly not, Dad. He's all yours, young lady. Oh, of course. Now, have a good time, Andrew. Yes, Mom. James, you danced just as beautifully as you did when you were 20. <laughs> I know why Polly Benedict says you haven't lived till you've danced with Andy Hardy. Miss Benedict is very kind. Polly also told me you have the smoothest mind of any boy in Carvel. Unfortunately, conversation is rapidly becoming a lost art. May 
I cut in? Oh, oh, why, certainly. Yeah. Well, you're the only man in the world I'd have given her up to. Goodbye now. Thank you. Where are you heading for, Andrew? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Benedict. I'm glad I ran into you, because if you don't give Mom and Dad a lift home, they're going to be in trouble because I'm going to take the car, which was what I was going to ask you to tell Dad. Oh, well, but Andrew, Thanks I... a lot for your help in this emergency, sir. That's what it says here, mister. Sign here. soft. What light through yonder window breaks? Tis the east and Juliet is the sun. Tis my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. But I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. Andrew Hardy speaking. Hello, dear. Listen, this is the police station calling. I tried to get you before to tell you we got your phone call about the water. We couldn't get in the house, so we turned it off at the outside meter. The outside meter? All right. Thank you very much. Fine business. Double bolt the door and leave the window unlocked.
Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. The car he must be around somewhere. Well, there's a light in the house. Well, he was dancing with me when all of a sudden he disappeared. He told me it was an emergency. He seemed very excited. young lady. Anything wrong? Everything is fine, officer. Hey, wait a minute. You see, Emily, you did turn the stove off. Where can Andrew be? Oh, I just feel it in my bones that something's wrong. Burglars. Emily, Emily, burglars, don't knock. <laughs> Judge, this young lady says that she's your son. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, she is. And everything's all right. Thank you, officer. Good night, Judge. Good night. Good night. Well, Andrew. I'm a, an innocent victim of circumstances. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the picture of innocence, I wonder what he'd look like if you were guilty. Well, come along, Isabel. We may as well go home. <laughs> and I'll see you to the door. Uh, good, good, night. Night. good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, <laughs> yeah, Emily, any of that turkey left? Yes, sir. Fix your sandwich. Good, good. Uh, Emily, what, uh, what's the matter with your son tonight? Andrew's thinking of getting married. No. Didn't he ask me tonight if a girl would mind settling down in a small town? Do you know what I saw him looking at in the store window this morning? Uh, wedding ring? Far beyond that. A baby's bathtub. Andrew's thinking of getting married and having a baby. He's only a baby himself. I just know that girl, wherever she is, isn't good enough for him. Oh, James, speak to him. Warn him about all the designing women in this world. Very well. Very well, Emily. It's uh, very complimentary to learn that you think I'm an expert on the subject. Hi, Dad. Hello, Andrew. I'm sorry if I caused you any embarrassment. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. I thought maybe we might have a little talk. Sort of man to man. Man to man? In this? <laughs> you can forget about that. Considering some of the things you've done in the past, wearing your Aunt Millie's kimono seems a little sane and conservative. Mm -hmm. Before I was married, I didn't even own a bathrobe. Before you were married? Uh, Dad, before you were married, uh, you went out and had lots of fun. I mean, you went out to parties and with girls and things like that, didn't you? Andrew, you want to remember that I wasn't born a gray-haired judge with a law book in my hand. <laughs> but after you get married, do you miss not having fun anymore? Well, certainly not. You don't miss it because you still have it. Only enjoy things more because you're doing them with the girl you love. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, of course. Uh, now that you've discovered there are no peculiar disadvantages, are you thinking about getting married? Oh, gee. Dad, you met Mom when you were a freshman, didn't you? Mm, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And look how swell your marriage turned out. 
That uh, telegram you received, hmm? that was from a Wainwright girl, wasn't it? Yeah. Kay Wilson. Dad, I... I think you're entitled to know that I'm... Uh, I'm planning on asking Kay to marry me. Mm-hmm. So... This is the real thing, is it? Well, Kay hasn't said anything to me, and I haven't spoken to her, but while I was away, we wrote to each other, and I thought about her an awful lot. Oh, I had dates with other girls, but not a one of them made me forget Kay. Yeah. I suppose that's a pretty solid test. I would like to uh, go back to college on the Wednesday train, Dad. So soon? I'm beginning to understand the enthusiasm for a Wainwright education. Well, everything I said about college I meant. I'd have meant it if I hadn't met Kay. I, I really do want to go back to school. The fact that Kay is there is not slowing me down any, though. You've thought it all out, and this is the way you want it, then? Yes. That's if it's all right with you and Mom. Well, I... I think you'd better let me talk to your mother first. Yes, sir. Good night, Andrew. College on Wednesday. Wednesday? Hmm. Wednesday. He's leaving home two weeks before he has to. He'd rather be with that girl than with his own flesh and blood. Uh, no, just possible this girl isn't even interested in Andrew. Why, what's the matter with Andrew? Well, nothing serious. But that doesn't mean that every girl in the world wants Andrew for her husband. James, you're on her side. Oh. We haven't even met the girl, and you're on her side. Emily, there's... I'm going to Wainwright to see this girl. When Andrew leaves, I'm going to be on the train with him. Well, I think we should both see her, but not like that. We don't want to come down on him like a protecting army. Emily, for ten years, we've talked about going back to Wainwright for alumni homecoming week. I think this is the year to do it. Oh, I knew you'd think of something when he's homecoming. Well, in just a few weeks. Then we'll be there in time to save him. Unless that vampire decides to marry him right away. Oh, whatever. Oh, oh. Take my things out to the men's dorm, will you, please? I'll pay you right well, now. If you figure on hoping it, it's a long way to the campus. I've been away so long, I'm going to love every inch of it. irresistible in that coat. Kay. Kay, darling. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Welcome back to Wainwright. Why, you look better than I ever thought you'd look, and I, I thought you'd look sensational. Well, you haven't run downhill yourself. What are you doing for the whole rest of the year? I figure if we have about five or six dates a week in about three years, we'll be back on schedule. <laughs> hey, give me a chance to catch my breath. Oh, and, and beside all of that, this here, it's this dance, it's not exactly a date. It's compulsory. I'm still a freshman, and you wouldn't want me to get in trouble by not going, would you? Of course I'm going with you. You know, Kay, a man could look for the rest of his life for a girl like you. And at the dance, it'll give me a chance to say something. Well, I have something very special to ask you. The dance will give us a chance to have a long, serious talk about us. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, I can't wait. And in the meantime, we'll always have luncheon together at our same old table. And to think there are some people that don't believe in college. Kay. Kay Wilson. 
Here comes your private messenger. Hello, Duke. Oh, Andrew, you remember Duke Johnson? I ought to. He was the first sophomore I had trouble with when I came to Wainwright. <laughs> My childhood is behind me, Hardy. I am a sober citizen. Oh. And president of the student council, I might add. Gosh, that's swell. You too can be the life of the party. I was uh, over waiting for an answer to some telegrams. It's a uh, new semester, and I'm already three months overdrawn on my allowance. <laughs> this came for you while I was there. I saw you through the window, so. Thank you. Something wrong? No, not really. It's from my guardian. Excuse me. I've got to get back to the dorm. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll go with you. If you don't mind, I'd rather you didn't. I've got some thinking to do. Nice girl. Uh, to put it mildly, she's triple terrific. Hardy, I want to talk to you, and I'll make it short. Hmm? Oh, how about giving the student council a hand? Well, Duke, you know, I've been away for such a long now, time now. Now, that's just exactly why I'm asking you. The two years that you've been away must have given you a lot that a kid right out of high school hasn't got. Uh, well, uh, now this dance, for instance. It's for the frosh, and they're not doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. The student council was looking around for a freshman to be chairman of the dance committee, and you're it. Now, all you have to do is see that there aren't any stags. Every frosh male brings a female, if you have to handcuff them together. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hardy. You've made old Duke a very happy man. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, you do have a date yourself, I hope. Duke, all I can say about my date is... Woo-hoo! Well, you did very well this time, Duke. Old Duke Johnson always does very well. Duke, why don't you change that old story? Why? When it still works. Hello there. Hello. You're Duke Johnson, aren't you? Your servant, lady. Uncle Duke, you're a campus big shot. Have you got a minute for a poor little freshman? What's your problem, young lady? And come just a little closer to the microphone. Do you like my hair? Hair? Sure, high class hair. Think my face is pretty? Very nice face, one of the best. And I'm not exactly stupid, either. Sister, you're talking to Uncle Duke. Let your hair down. Here's my grief. I'm a frosh named Coffee Smith, and I've been around since college opened, and nobody's asked me for a date yet. Is that all that's bothering you? I'll see somebody takes care of that. Hooray. Find somebody to take me to the frosh get-together? That I will guarantee over my signature. It's not going to be easy. Oh, you're a cinch. Don't take my word for it. Look at yourself in the mirror. You look. Holy smoke! What? You're taller than... That's the trouble, Uncle Duke. I'm taller than anybody. Well, look, honey, why don't you wear flat-heeled shoes? And go around with your landing gear pulled in. You know. No soap, Uncle Duke. Why pretend? I'm an awful big girl, and anybody that likes me has got to like an awful big girl. Look, I said not to worry. You'll get took to that dance, and you'll have a good time. Yes, sir, you'll be there. If it takes two guys to do it. It looks very smart on you, sir. Very smart. Huh? Well, looks like you've got yourself a sale. Press it up pretty and pack it. I'll wait. We can have it in a few minutes. Let's see. That will be, uh... 6250 plus the sales tax. I'm afraid I haven't got that much cash with me now. But, uh, I could pay you on the first of the month. Why don't you come in the first of the month? Maybe we'll still have it. Huh. Excuse me, I'm on a phone. I'd like to place a call to Judge James K. Hardy in Carvel, please. This is his son calling. And could you rush it through? I'll wait right here. Hmm? The charges? I want to reverse naturally. Say, uh, you had a check sport jacket in the window. Yes, here it is, sir. Well, 
Well, it's a little conservative, but uh, I guess it'll do. Well, we have other coats. Awfully high priced here, $62.50. What do I care? I'm loaded. Uh, Operator, can you hurry? I'm not calling Honolulu. Doesn't fit you. It's not supposed to. Operator, we'll, we'll try the courthouse or the law library. He's got to be someplace. That's the kind of material that shrinks. It's a little bit too big anyhow. It's the only coat of this type we have in stock. I don't expect to get any more. Well, it's okay with me. I don't like it anyway. Hello, Dad. Remember all of that money I gave you to hold for me and told you not to give it back to me under any circumstances? Yeah, well, wire me 6250 of it right away, will you? But, 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 Dad, you're a judge. You know the laws. Isn't there some way you can break a non-breakable agreement? All right. All right. Give my love to Mom. Goodbye. That's just the trouble. Everybody worries about my future, but nobody worries about my now. Look, couldn't you keep it out of the window for at least a few days? For a month. Fair enough. I guess it has to be. Say, can I win your contest? I, I mean, can I enter your contest? Oh, you got the contest won already, huh? Well, I've got to spend already at least sixty-two fifty of it. Oh, hi there. Hi. Can I take your books for you? Thank you. How was your ancient Greek this morning? Greek to me. How was political science? <laughs> Greek to me. At least these first few weeks have been. Say, what's new? I haven't seen you since yesterday. <laughs> oh, I got a new dream dress for the dance. Wait till you see it. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hey, Hardy, here's a note from the dean marked important. Huh? Oh, hold these, will you? Hey. These come immediately after class. Oh, I wonder what I've done wrong now. You don't have to remember. The dean will tell you. Sure, hold, hold these, Kay. I'll see you in jail. I'm Andrew Hardy. I think the dean wanted to see me. Somebody wants to see you. Mom! Dad! Andrew! Andrew. <laughs> oh, boy, am I glad to see you. <laughs> Hiya, Dad. How'd you get here? Oh, for nearly a hundred years. Your father's been promising to bring me here for homecoming week. Which should begin, according to my official invitation, about eight o'clock tonight at the Frosch get-together. The chairman of the dance, Dad, is none other than your son. Chairman? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Andrew, you look at least an inch taller. And, folks, there are only two kind of freshmen here this year, the kind that takes just any girl and the kind that takes Kay Wilson, and that's me. Oh, oh, so we'll meet your young lady this evening, huh? You'll meet her and you'll love her, and you'll wonder how a million dollars worth of girl could waste her time on me. <laughs> <laughs> your rooms are ready for you, Mrs. Hardy. Oh, thank you. Well, Andrew, I suppose you'll be running around like a chicken with his head off till 8 o'clock. Well, Dad, I still have to round up some stubborn Romeos, and I have to see the student council president, Duke Johnson, and then at dinner tonight I have a meeting with my committee. But uh, I can cancel all that. Dad. Oh, no, no, nothing of the kind, nothing of the kind. Mother and I will get organized here. Then we're going to have dinner with Dr. Standish. So we'll see you at the dance. Hello, Hardy. Hi. Say, hey, Hardy. Yeah? If I told you where you could pick up ten bucks without lifting a finger, would you give me half? Oh, uh, sure. Well, then, if I told you where you could get forty dollars without a lick of words, you'd still give me half? Absolutely. What is this, a gag? I'm busy. Oh, uh, one more question. That's all. If I tell you where you can get $75 by just asking for it, you'd split it with me, wouldn't you? Sure. Word of honor? Word of honor. 
75 bucks. Oh, boy, my sport coat. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm, I'm Andrew Hardy. You want Miss Jeeves. Back there. Thank you. Uh, I'm Andrew. Oh. Something I can do for you? Uh, okay? Yes, I'm Andrew Hardy. Oh, I'm Hattie Jeeves. How do you do? Uh, I, uh, I think I won your prize, it says here. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Hardy. And how do you want it? In fives or tens, I don't care. Oh, the prize isn't in cash. The, the prize, I... I don't get seventy-five dollars? Yes, and merchandise. Merchandise? You mean stuff like... The, oh. you, you don't happen to have any men's sports jackets around, do you? No, but you can have seventy-five dollars worth of anything in the shop. You see, we didn't dream that a man would enter this contest, much less win it. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll have to think it over. <laughs> Wait for me. I want to talk to you. Yeah, I'm certainly glad I caught you. I've been trying to phone you all over town. Well, I've been down at the new little lingerie shop. Lingerie? Andrew. Oh, I won their prize in merchandise. And I can't... But I, I thought maybe you could go in and buy something for the dance tonight, like some stockings or something like that. That's awfully sweet of you, Andrew, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going home. This afternoon. Home? For how long, you mean? You mean that you won't be able to go to the dance tonight? No, I won't. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I don't mean to butt into your private affairs, but... Oh, this that's is... quite all right, Andrew. Well, this is a family matter. You told me you didn't have any family. I have a guardian, remember? Oh, goodbye, Andrew. I've got to run. I have a train to catch. Goodbye, Kay. I don't know how I'm going to get along here without you, but you will hurry back, won't you? Yes. It'll only be a day or so, and when I get back, we'll have that long talk. Yeah, and when you get back, remember, I've got something awfully important to tell you. All right. Goodbye, Andrew. Very nice girl to cross get together. Uh, couldn't you give me a little one? About eight or nine feet tall? Speak to you for a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Chairman. Say, you must have things pretty well greased up for tonight if you've got time on your hands. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to resign, Duke. My girl went out of town and the chairman can't show up stag again. Oh, don't worry about a thing. How do you like them, smart or pretty? Go ahead, take a pick. I've got just the girl. Uh, well, you see, Duke, I've been going steady with a girl, and I... My friend, I have selected you a partner for this night only who is strictly platonic. In short, you will platonic her, and I can guarantee that she will platonic you. But I... You can't quit in a crisis. We count on you. The college counts on you. My friend, do you know that pretty puss in the white cap afloat there in the briny name of Smith? Uh, no, I... Uh... This is a must. Well, if it's for the good of the college, I'll ask her, because there's always the chance that she'll say no. Are, are you Miss Smith? Uh, I'm Andrew Hardy. Hi, Uncle Andrew. Uh, Duke Johnson said that I... Uh, you, uh, you couldn't go to the dance with me, could you? Yes, I could. Uncle Duke guaranteed to get me a date. Uncle Duke's a great man. Eight o'clock girls' dorm, and I'll guarantee you won't have to look very hard for me. You know, there's, there's nothing personal in this. Tonight, I'm a girl that thinks not of romance, but dancing. Don't be late, Uncle Andrew, and thanks. 
Yes, ma'am. I thought you were my date. No, I'm sorry. I'm Andrew Hardy. I'm here waiting for Coffee Smith. Oh. Oh, she lives downstairs. She'll probably be up in a minute. Thank you. Coffee Smith? Yes, Hardy, would you mind telling her whom you're waiting for? Not at all. Coffee Smith. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, no, it can't be true. I will prove it to you. Who did you say you were waiting for? Coffee Smith. <laughs> Good evening, Uncle Andrew. Coffee Smith arriving. Good evening. And all ready for the rat race. I guess there's no doubt that you're seeing what you're seeing, and I'm seeing what I'm seeing. It was a dirty trick. Duke Johnson should never have done it. I don't think he meant any harm. I'd have been bigger than any man he could have picked out. And I'd have been smaller than pretty nearly any girl. It's quite a problem, going through life like the Statue of Liberty without her torch. Yeah. Yeah. It was a wonderful dance, and... I had a grand time. Thanks, and good night. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Look, let's, let's, let's go to that dance. Go to the dance? You and me? Together? Why, certainly. Uh, it's not how tall you are or how short you are. It's what you got. Wait, wait, Coffee, there's, there's a lot of people in this world that are too tall or too small to do some things. Well, we'll just pull up our suspenders and sash you out and kick them right in the teeth. We'll show them. Let's show them, Uncle Andrew. Gee, you look awful pretty tonight, Shorty. You're looking mighty handsome yourself, big boy. James, the way we've brought Andrew up, I'm sure this girl will be attractive and nice. Well, you know, Emily, love is blind. Jumping, she has a fat. How you doing? Scared. No feeling from the knees down. Oh, I wonder what their children will look like. Uh, <clears throat> as chairman of the Frosh Get Together, I declare this dance started. And when the music starts, break clean and no hitting in the clinches. Girl's tall enough to be his father. Come on, let's loosen up. Everybody's watching us. 
We showed him, didn't we? But do you mind if we have all the dances together? Not while Duke Johnson lives. Why, Uncle Duke? Uh, may I borrow the chapter for this truck? Why, certainly. Excuse me, Mom and Dad. I, I just realized that what you must be thinking. Well, we think that girl's pretty beautiful, but do you think she stopped growing? Mom, that girl, she isn't. Oh, I'm beginning to see. And that young lady wasn't your girl, was she, Annie? No, but that's right, Dad. That's Coffee Smith. I had to bring her because the chairman couldn't come stay. <laughs> My girl, Kay, she, she had to go home. Some kind of family trouble or something. Well, nothing serious, I hope. I don't know, Mom. I've been worried sick. Oh, I think everything will turn out all right, Andrew. When's she coming back? I don't know, Dad. I don't know. This may have been your first date at college, but I'll bet everybody knew you were there. They won't call you the Invisible Man, either. I can't give you a medal or anything like that, but... Why don't you take that $75 and spread it all over yourself? Why, you can buy your sport jacket. It'll be good for you. It's like a new hat for a woman. It'll put bubbles in your gum. No, Coffee, the prize isn't in cash. It's $75 in merchandise. And, well, what would I do with, you know, stuff like that? Sunk, brother. I swear that you can't give fluffy stuff away. Exclusive with us leotards, just in from the east. Looks like my old flannel underwear. Probably a combination of that and ballet tights. Uncle Andrew, Coffee Smith has an idea. Well, here it is. James, have you got the ticket? Dad, be sure and take care of Mom. I'll come back by Easter and take the job off your hand. Mom, be sure and make Dad wear his rubbers, though. Kay! Andrew! Oh, Kay! Hello, Andrew! Gosh, you look swell. Oh, thank you. Mom, this is the girl I've been telling you about. Uh, Kay Wilson, this is my mother. Oh, it's a great pleasure, Miss Wilson. How do you do, Mrs. Hardy? Your son has told me so much about you. Oh, uh, excuse me, and this is my father, Judge Hardy. Oh, privilege, sir. Thank you. We've been looking forward to this ourselves. Isn't this just my luck? You're leaving, and Kay Wilson just gets here. <laughs> oh, uh, 
the train. The train's going to leave. Well, there isn't anything I can do about that. Uh, goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Dan. I, I think you know all the things I'd like to say to you, son. Yeah. Well, uh, goodbye, young lady. It's been very nice meeting you. Thank you. It would have helped some if you'd see that our offspring here spends a little time on his studies. <laughs> oh, he will. I spend a lot of time on mine. Goodbye, Aunt. Goodbye, Mom. Oh, remember, we love you very uh, much, dear. Have a good trip. Well, there's so many things I'd like to talk over with you. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Have a good trip, Dad. <laughs> Aren't my family something? And they liked you very much, too. I can tell. I like them. I'm glad. And you, you look even better than before you went away, so I guess everything must be okay, huh? Yes, everything's all right. Which way are you going? Anywhere you're going. Jake, will you take Miss Wilson's bags, please? Girls' dormitory. Okay, Andy. You'll never know how awful homecoming was without you, and I'll never forgive your family troubles for killing our date. We'll have our date, Andrew. Will you take me to the concert at the Greek Theater tonight? Kay, you used to be out of this world, but even you were improving. And this time, nothing's going to stop us from having that long talk. After the concert, well, well I positively got to ask you something. Andrew, perhaps I'd better tell you now that I... No, it'll wait. But I have got something I positively got to ask you right now. Anything. Well, I make a long-distance call. You get yourself ready, comb your hair, polish your shoes, and pick me up at 7.45. That's me. Kay, how long has the human race been in existence before this generation? What? Oh, thousands of years. Why? How could they have gone all that time without you? Lady, if I had a hat on, I'd take it off to you. You are a sensation. Neat, huh? Protects the chassis from the wintry wind, and it doesn't hide the figure. Every girl on the campus will have one by nightfall. And won't life be prettier? Take off, coffee. Here goes the parade. Hey, coffee! Super! And Duke oh. Johnson, too. Not very good. Wonderful. Oh, gee, coffee, it's terrific. Where did you get it? What sizes do they come in, coffee? I want to get one a little too small. Latest thing from the East. Coffee, I'll find out where you got it if I have to take the town apart. Save your strength, gals. You gotta see Coffee Smith, because she controls the entire local supply. See Coffee Smith, lower floor, girls dormitory, 6 p.m., and don't forget to bring all your next year's allowance. Buy me a soda, Uncle Duke. Business matters leave me weak and hungry. has made up for everything. I'm glad, Andrew. Because there's something I want to tell you. Yeah, there's something I want to tell you, too. Only I can't seem to get it out. Please, Andrew. No, I, I've got to just tell you. Let me, let me first. I never had any trouble talking to girls before. Now, when it's the most important time of all, I, I seem to get all tongue-tied. Wait, no, I've let me to... Andrew. I'm sorry. I've been upset. I was upset on account of it. And how? I suddenly became aware of something that's been staring me in the face for a long time. Something I never realized before. It came as quite a shock. Yeah, I, I know how that can be. I've told you about my guardian, Dane Kittredge. He wired me and I went home to see him. A wonderful thing happened. Andrew because you and I have been such great friends. 
I want you to know before anyone else. Dane and I are going to be married tomorrow. Married? I guess I should have told you sooner, but, well, till I got home this time, I wasn't sure myself. Well, I hope you'll be <clears throat> very happy. Thanks, Andrew. Dane will be here tomorrow, and, and because he doesn't know anybody here, and because we owe so much to you, we'd like you to be best man at our wedding. Best? <clears throat> best man? Oh, you'll love Dane. He's out of this world. <laughs> yeah. He's the kindest, most generous, and he's had to fight for everything he has. Mm -hmm. He didn't even have a chance to go to college. And to think, what a big success he's made. Kay. Yes, Andrew. Are you, are you certain, are you sure that you're going to be satisfied with staying home with, with an old man of 35? Dane is a young man of 36. I'm going to be the happiest girl in the world. Congratulations. Then we'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Four o'clock at the chapel. Chapel? I saw the chapel the first day I got here. It's where my mother and father were married. You mind, you mind if we leave now? I've got some studying to do and... I... Instead of walking me across the campus, why don't you take the shortcut back to the dorm? Sure, I'll have more time to study, too. Oh, I had a swell time tonight. Hi, partner. Oh, hi, coffee. I'm awful busy. Not too busy for this, partner. Through a whale or one. Mm-hmm. What is this? It's the profit on the leotards. Your sport jacket. It's $85. Why, you're a millionaire. Listen, Coffee, I'm awful busy. No, you listen. This is Coffee Smith, and we're still partners. What's the trouble? Nothing. Nothing at all. If it were I, I'd tell you. I'm on my way to be best man at Kay Wilson's wedding. She's marrying her guardian. I... I brought this for you. Thank you, Andrew. I knew you would, so I didn't let Dane buy me a bridal bouquet. Is that... his car? Yes. Oh, this is for the minister. The best man always slips in the sea, you know. I guess so. Everything's set. Andrew, this is Dane. Andrew, how are you? Ah, uh, how do you do, sir? Darling, what did I do with the ring and the fee for the minister? The ring is in your left-hand coat pocket, and I gave the money to Andrew. Good old efficiency, Kittredge. Mine like a steel trap. Here, you better take this ring. Don't lose it. No, of course not. Okay, Mrs. Kittredge. May I have the ring? With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. I pronounce you man and wife. Whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder.
The line forms at the right, Andrew. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. Will the best man sign the marriage certificate, please? As witness. Thank you, Dr. White. It was a very uh, nice service. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. You were a tower of strength. And Andrew, this is for you. Me? What? Rice, remember? You throw it at us as we drive off. Uh. <laughs> Don't forget your marriage certificate. Uh, Thank you. Good old efficiency, Kittredge. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Andrew. <laughs> Bye. Come on. Bye. Bye. Early now, doesn't it? Yeah. Cold too. Mm-hmm. Mind if I sit down? No. Selling leotards is awfully hard on the feet. <laughs> it's a tough rap, Uncle Andrew. Oh. It's just one of those things, take them as they come. That's the way to look at it. It's not as if she were the only co ed here. There there are plenty of them. New ones every semester. The woods are full of them. She certainly couldn't say she was the most beautiful girl. Her eyes were too big and her chin was pointed. Gosh, you couldn't even say she was pretty. I mean, not awful pretty. Not that there was anything wrong with her. Not a thing wrong with her, not a thing. Had a mind of her own, did things her own way. Maybe even a little stubborn. Not that it wasn't nice being with her. I, I'm not worried. I always had more dates than I could handle. There's no sense in making this important because it wasn't. There was nothing different about her or what we did or the way we felt or... Hurts bad, doesn't it? Awful bad. And it keeps getting worse. Not really. You'll feel better before you know it. I was going to ask her to marry me when she told me. And now... Now you think it's all over. You've lost the one girl in the world. You can't ever see yourself falling in love again or getting married or being happy. It adds up that way. But it works out different. There's a couple of billion people in the world, and a marriage only takes two. It isn't just one man for one woman. It's the right kind of a man for the right kind of woman. Kay's the kind of girl for you, but suppose Kay'd never come to Wainwright. Would that mean you'd been out of the race before it started? I guess not. You see, Andrew, at 14, a boy and a girl are the same age. At 16, she's getting ahead of him. At 20, she's a woman, ready for the responsibility of being a woman. And a fellow at 20... It's just a kid not even getting started. Is that it, Coffin? You can be grateful to Kay, because now you know the kind of girl you want. And when everything's right, that girl will be around. You're swell. It's neat, and it's logical, and... I can't argue with it. But right now, you feel worse than before, is that it? Might explode or holler or break something? I sure would. Did you call me, Emily? Yes. James, that pie isn't as good as usual, is it? <laughs> You always say that, Emily, and they always turn out delicious. <laughs> yes, but I want this one to be better than delicious. Andrew's been eating at those college restaurants for months. Wonder why he didn't let us know what train he's coming in on. James, you don't think there'll be a train wreck, do you? Well, I don't believe a railroad wreck a whole train just so our son Andrew couldn't get home for Easter. <laughs> what is you doing, Millie? When a famous hunter comes home, the least his old dad can do is polish up his trophies. Package for Andrew Hardy. Oh. Sign here, will you please, Mrs. Hardy? Oh, it's from the clothing shop at the college. Better hang it up to here. I'll sign it. Oh. Well, 
I suppose that's the kind of jacket all the young men are wearing. What a perfectly terrible thought, Emma. I wonder how Andrew financed it. Let me put it in his room. I've got to put these pictures around anyway. Well, hang it up by the window. The fresh air helps get the wrinkles out. I think it looked better with the wrinkles in. Would you be good enough? Dad. <laughs> oh, I, uh, oh, I was so afraid you found it impossible to get a berth on the train. Impossible? You're looking at good old efficiency, Hardy. Uh, new hat? <laughs> Gloves, too. I believe yeah. so. The fact is, I've been so busy, I haven't been able to think about such things as clothes. Well, maybe you could think about this. Your mother baked you an apple pie. Oh, that's swell, Ma. I mean, uh, as kids would say. How's your young lady? Oh, my young lady, she... I, uh, I think I forgot to write you in my letters, but, uh... Kay is married. James, do you hear that? Kay Wilson's married. That's a lovely ceremony, too. I was best man. Uh, married a fine chap, name of uh, Kittredge. Yes, that was it, Kittredge. Funny, I never forget a name. Mine like a steel trap. <laughs> Classmate of yours? No, Dane Kittredge never has been to college. Dane Kittredge? Kittredge, Kittredge. How, how old is he? Oh, he's a young fellow, roughly. I'd, I'd gauge him around 36. Yes, yes, it must be the Kittredge Shipbuilding Company. No, this chap is the head of a steel mill, I believe, Dan. Well, that's the man. Oh, an amazing career. Dame Kittredge is an industrial wizard. Kittredge, I've heard the name somewhere. Oh, he's very ordinary if you were to ever meet him. Very ordinary. Mm. I think he's a very lucky girl to get a man as successful as that. Oh, well, excuse me. I'm going in and look up that apple pie. It's on the icebox. <laughs> I knew he was pretending to be somebody. Now I see. It's Dane Kittredge. Brilliant career. <laughs> Industrial wizard. your trunk. Yes, Mom, it, it is mine. Uh, put it right there, thank you. Thank you. Well, Andrew, what on earth do you want your trunk for? You'll only be here a few days. Dad, I'm not going back to college. Not going back to college. What happened, son? Nothing, Dad. It's just that college and law school are too slow. I see. You're afraid that you'd be outdistanced by your contemporaries. Dad, the key to everything is success. And I don't mean the colleges. But a man has got to go out into the world, build things, make things, sell things to people. Man's got to go after what he wants. And you have worked out a plan whereby you get what you go after, but your plan does not include college. No. While I was in the Army, I met a young officer who was an engineer. He's now down in South America on a construction job. I sent him a cable before I left Wainwright, and I expect an answer any minute. He told me I could go down there and get a job whenever I wanted it. Mom. Dad. Mom and Dad, I... I feel terrible about this thing. You both have been so wonderful to me, and I hate changing the plans you've made for me. But, Dad, I can't go on sitting at a desk like a schoolboy while every other man is out making good. It's all because Cableson got married. Yes. It is. Forbid him to go. 
Or didn't we go back to Wainwright? No, Emily, a boy's got to want to go to college to get any good out of it. Anyway, you could talk to him. He'll listen to you. He always has. Well, I'll try. But I'm afraid this time... I'll try. Come in. I thought you'd be up here, Dad. So? Well, now that I'm here, what did you think I was going to do? Well, it's obvious that you'd try and talk me out of going. No, you're wrong. That is... Not my intention. Thanks, Dad. I'd hoped you'd understand. After all, it is my life, and it has to be my decision. Nevertheless, Andrew, your mother and I have an interest in this, too. You see, we taught you how to think, your mother and I. And if you make a mistake, well, it's really our mistake. There's no mistake being made, Dad, none whatsoever. This is a young man's world. Oh. Now I know what you're thinking about. Well, Andrew, suppose we just hop over the next 10 or 15 years. Let's skip all the details of your making good. There's just one proud picture uppermost in your mind. Your return. I can see you coming back. Big success. Still young. Perhaps little grades, temples. Maybe a stash. Well-cut clothes. Slightly foreign flavor, and in corners, people will be whispering. They'll say, that's Andrew Hardy, famous engineer. That's the man who built that great bridge that everyone said was impossible. Somehow, Kay will be there. And she'll be thinking, maybe she married the wrong man. Maybe she should have waited for you. Maybe she'll never know. Well, whatever gave you ideas like that? No, no, no. These, these aren't ideas. These are truths. And I know because once I had almost the same thoughts myself. And you see, we're just alike. <laughs> well, I was only 14 at that time, and you're old enough to know better. Dad, I'm going to South America. And I'm going to make good. There's nothing wrong with being an engineer. Certainly not. It's a fine profession. Civilization couldn't have progressed without it. And if I thought that you wanted to be an engineer, really wanted to be, I'd be so happy I'd cheer. But I do. Uh, no, you don't. You're not going to South America to fulfill a lifelong ambition. You're just running away from a girl. And what's more important, you're running away from your first defeat. Now, well, that's true, isn't it? Yes, sir, it's true. And you never thought that this trip, if you don't want to be an engineer, would also keep you from ever being a lawyer. It'd be too late to start all that when you came back. You never considered that, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, I... I don't know. Well, you ought to know, before you risk your entire life. If I was taking such a gamble, I'd make sure that the odds weren't quite so heavy against me. You make it sound awful dismal. Don't you believe you better do a little more thinking before you finish packing? And remember this. There's no shortcut to success. You've got to eat crow before you can appreciate the taste of chicken. You know, before you came up, I had it all figured out. Now you've got me worried about a lot of things. Well, would you rather give it more thought now or suffer regret the rest of your life? Dad, there for a minute, I... I thought of running away and joining the Foreign Legion. <laughs> oh, only for a minute. An Easter present? It was nice of you to get it for me. Oh, we didn't. It came this morning. And I've been wondering what minor larceny you committed to get it.
college kid could afford a coat like that. I'm going away, Dad. And now I'm going down to the telegraph office and wait for my answer. Here's your message. And it's good news. How do you do? When did you get back into town? And what's more important, how long are you going to stay? Uh, I was just leaving for... I don't know. You haven't the faintest idea who I am. Remember, we danced together and I sang and... Oh, yes. You were lovely, Miss... Uh... Isabel. You were lovely, Isabel. Oh. <laughs> but we didn't have a chance to get acquainted. So, I'm not doing anything in particular right now. And if you're not doing anything in particular, well... <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mary. Good night. Good night. We should have stayed home. Emily, 20 of my colleagues gave me a dinner. I couldn't tell them I was going to stay home because our son was going to run away and join the foreign legion. college and law school. You're, you're going back to Wainwright? Unless you know another way that I can become a judge or a lawyer. And anyhow, I have a very strong hunch that I'm going to be elected something or other in the Southmore class. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Well, I think we ought to celebrate. Well, I've got some cold ham and potato salad. Don't forget the apple pie, Mom. Oh, oh, let me help you, Mr. Yes, Tyson. Yes. Well. Dad, after this, you and Mom won't have to worry about me anymore. After this, when you tell me something, I'll have sense enough to listen. Well, here's quite an addition to your collection. Yes, Isabel gave this to me. I know that Aunt Melly put all of these pictures over here just to kid me. Too bad we haven't got a larger piano. Oh, that won't be necessary, Dad. You're talking to the new Andrew Hardy. Oh, Isabel is a swell girl. They're all swell girls, but... My past is behind me. That's uh, fine, son. From now on, I'm going to concentrate on work. Up at 6, study till 9, class is till 5, and then more studying up until midnight. But from now on, I'm through with women. I'm never going to get involved with women again. That's the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me. <laughs> <laughs> 